Hi folks, Harry Frank from Gray Machine here, and in this tutorial I'd like to show you a very simple and easy way to generate text that is randomly scattered in a 3D space. This is actually pretty easy to do, and there's some real time savers in here that I'd like to share with you. So let's get to creating a new comp here, and this will be my random XYZ text tutorial. Okay, so let's just put some text in here so we have something to work with. I'm gonna make this 3D and look at the position. And we'll make an expression. So the most basic of random functions is simply typing the word random and then putting uh, start and end parentheses. Now this is gonna give us an error because random is simply going to generate one single random number. And it's actually gonna be between zero and one if we don't define any other numbers in there. Now, remember, position is what we call an array. It is three different values that make up one property. So we need to accommodate for that. So we need to have three different random values in here. Now, if I do something like this where I say, okay, r is equal to this random number, and then in brackets I type r and r and r. So this is going to stick one random number into all of these values here. This isn't going to quite be what we want. Well, first of all, it's just between 0 and 1, but it's going to be the same value for all x, y, and z. So first things first, let's get um, this to be a much higher value. So if I say 100, this is going to be a random value between 0 and 100. Now notice as I scrub around that this is actually random on each frame, which uh, we can take care of that. Now if I say this is negative 100 comma 100, this will be a random value anywhere between negative 100 and positive 100. We're getting there. Okay, so let's jump back and kind of take care of this um, jumping around problem where it's generating a random number on each frame. We want it to actually just pick one random number and stay still. And the way we do this is by using something called seed random. Now this has two purposes. One of them is to define the random seed. So if I put in parentheses any number here, this is just gonna be a starting point for the randomness that will be chosen in the rest of the expression. This happens for uh, a couple different functions. Random is one of them, uh, wiggle is another, noise is another. But um, we can just put whatever number you want in there, or you know, what we can do is just put index, and index is equal to the current layer number. So every time I make a new layer, it's gonna use a different random seed, which that's kind of a useful way to do it. But if I put a comment after this, there's one more parameter that is defined in seed random, and this is an on or off, or zero or one, or true or false flag. Uh, by default, it is off, which is uh, what we call timeless. Timeless means it is simply, well, not generating, a, or it is generating a different value on each frame. But if I set this to one, or I just type the word true, then this will be one random value for the duration of the composition. And that works. Now, how do we get this to actually generate random values for all three values of the position? Well, we could set up three different values for X, Y, and Z, but that's a little bit more complicated than what we need to do here. What we can do is generate random values that are a range between one array and another array. Again, remember, an array is a set of values that work together, like X, Y, and Z. So. Instead of jamming all this into the random statement, I'm actually gonna make this a little bit more friendly by putting my start and end values up here in some variables. And then down here, I'll just generate values that range from A to B. Now up here, I just need to define my start and end values. So instead of having a single number like one or 100, I can have this be an array. So if I set this to negative 1000 for X, Y, and Z, And then for uh, B, I'll make this positive 1,000. I don't need to type positive 1,000. Let's just assume that it is positive if I don't have a negative value in front of it. So now we can have a range of values that go from negative 1,000 X, Y, Z to positive 1,000 in X, Y, Z. So these values will get pushed into the random value and then actually, I don't even need this. In fact, this would uh, cause an error because what's being generated right here is in a, a three value array right here. So I don't even need this and I don't even need this. We're generating a random value right here that is gonna be random for X, Y, and Z. So now I've got one 
layer of text here, and if I keep duplicating, 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 we'll see that this is random all over the place. Now let's create, oops, a light, and I don't want a light, I wanna create a camera, so I can pull back a little bit. So now we can see that we've got randomly distributed text. Now, one thing that is a little bit uh, limiting here is that we have basically fixed values. So if I duplicate you know, 50 of these, and I want this to not be uh, 1,000 to 1,000, but maybe a little bit bigger, I would have to go back and redo that. So it's probably best to actually have this connected to some sort of slider that I could adjust this value. Now, that said, I'm also gonna make a way to have these text layers look at a list of values. So that way I can just copy and paste a list or just type it in as a list and dynamically grab each word from the list. So that means I'm gonna have an extra layer in here. So I'm gonna grab that random list. So that way I have my extra layer in here and I can just put my uh, expression sliders on there. So I'm gonna go find a list of random words, which we can find at listofrandomwords.com. So let's say we want, uh, let's do the works. Let's go with 50 random words, just because doing a list of 50 words Type, typing them, oh, contra bassoonist, that's a very interesting word. Uh, I'm gonna copy these and put these in a text layer. Just copy and paste. The formatting doesn't matter because all we're gonna be doing is grabbing the text out of these. So let's set this a little bit smaller so I can read this and let's just stick it right there so we have it and we don't really need it. So to that list, because this is kind of our source, in fact, I'm just gonna rename this layer source. We'll call this source text. Uh, let's go to our expression controls and create a slider here. And this one of these will be the minimum. Um, we'll call this random minimum, duplicate that, and then this will be random maximum. So minimum will say, let's try 1500, and then this one next one will be positive 1500. So instead of using fixed values of 1000, I'll grab those values up here. So again, I want my two variables. So I've got min and max. And we'll pick whip the minimum value right here. Put a semicolon, drop down, pick whip the maximum value, semicolon. Uh, so now we've got a slightly different random set of values. Let's turn this layer back on and Oops, okay, now I can duplicate this, but let's jump into getting the source text out of the source text layer. So let's close this up and look back inside the text here, and what we wanna do is create a source text expression. So if I create that expression, and we'll just say uh, T is equal to this source text, and I can't just grab the layer, I need to actually twirl this open and get that source text right there so I can pick whip the source text. So if I do this and just pick whip it and it's saying, okay, we're looking uh, globally at this comp, we're looking at the layer called source text and we're looking at an attribute called uh, the source text of the text. So uh, that is my source text and this should be one random word but it's actually a lot of different words and I don't want that. Now what I can do because again, this is an array. We have multiple values in here. We have lots of letters, and uh, actually we have a return value or a carriage return at the end of each word that drops down to the next line. So um, if I say T and then zero in brackets, you would hope that it would grab this first word, thinking that, well, maybe this first word is uh, part one of the array, but it's actually not. This ends up being the first letter, and this doesn't really help us. But there's a very handy uh, function in JavaScript called split. So assuming that this T is equal to text, so it's basically what we call a text string. It's a bunch of letters and or numbers, alphanumeric characters. So what I can do with JavaScript is a function called split. So if I take that text there, which is equal to T, and then I put a period and I put split, I can split this up into a new array using a value in parentheses. So in parentheses, I can specify a value that says, well, anytime you see this value here, like a space or an asterisk or a dash or whatever, anytime you see that, split it into an array. So 
In the case of this text, what we need is every time it drops to a new line, we need to split it. And that is a carriage return. And the way we define a carriage return is a backslash R in parentheses. Make sure the parentheses, or uh, not parentheses, well, yes, parentheses and quotes. Not smart quotes, just regular quotes. Uh, so t.split, split's going to split it. Uh, according to what it sees in parentheses, and in parentheses we have a string that is uh, backslash r, which defines a carriage return, which is kind of interesting. So now at this point, if I say t uh, zero, nope, that doesn't work because I did it wrong. You know why? Uh, because t is still equal to the source text, even though I split it here, it hasn't changed the value of t. Now, if I get rid of this, what we're going to see is the array. So these are values basically separated um, by commas. The commas are just put there to show that that is the separation between each uh, slot in the array. So now what I need to do is actually assign this to a variable like word or something. Word equals the split. So now if I say word zero in brackets, uh, I get a single word. And if I change this number, it's going to jump to a different word in the list. Pretty handy, right? Keep in mind, it's doing this for every single frame. So it doesn't store this anywhere. That's kind of the downside of expressions is they execute the script on every single frame. There's really no way to store values from one frame to the next. I can't globally uh, do this or just split it once at frame zero and then reference that. So it has to do this each time. So now to automate this even more, what I can do is use the layer number. So right now where I'm on layer number three. So if I say uh, index inside parentheses, it's going to grab word uh, number three, flub, flubos, flub, fluboscrosis, flubo, I don't even know how to pronounce it. But that's word number three. So if my first word starts at layer number three, what I can do is subtract three from this uh, first layer, and this will get the very, very first word of the list. Now, if I keep duplicating this, this is going to keep generating random positions and keep grabbing different words from that list automatically. Now, here's the one downside or just the thing to be very careful about when you do this is that everything will shift around if you add another layer to the top. So make sure you're pretty comfortable with where your layers are in terms of um, how many layers you have, or at least what's here at the top. Because the second you add something, it's gonna shift everything around and uh, drop that uh, that list down. So we made 50 of these. So if I keep duplicating till I get to random text number 50, it should probably give me an error at 51. Yep. Because I can't find it or actually it is going to be, yeah, no, we're good. So 50 layers of text. Now here's a cool thing that you can do to get around this uh, idea that uh, limiting your, your layers in here. One of the cool things about After Effects is that we can pre-compose things and collapse the transformations of that comp and basically treat it as one big chunk of 3D. So I'm gonna take all of this stuff, every single layer in here, and pre-compose this. So this is a random text group one. Let's say we wanted multiple groups. Okay, so right now it's one flat two-dimensional layer. This doesn't do us any good. So let's go to our toggle uh, down here, switch it to switches. I want 3D. That's something. Uh, it's still a flat project projection of t 3D. Uh, click on Collapse Transformations, and now we have a fully uh, 3D kind of thing. So let me add our camera. Let's zoom back here, pull back. So you can see it treats it as one block. I can move these around, rotate it around as one group. I can even do things like scale it in X, Y, and Z. More specifically, or more useful, is the Z scale. So if you want these to actually scale out and be a little bit more uh, deep in 3D space, you can actually use the Z scale, even though these are basically flat two-dimensional layers. But the collapsed comp that is 3D is not, uh, not flat 2D at all. It's actually very deep 3D. So that is a very cool way of automating 3D text in your compositions. In my example here, I just kind of dressed it up using a gradient ramp, a little bit of blue, added some glow, 
and particles always help sell the 3D space of things as well. So if I move my camera in and out, we've got some particles and text. Um, actually, just to show the particles so we don't leave stones unturned, I'm using trap code particular. Uh, this is the latest version, which is, I should know because I worked on this for six months, 2.5. Uh, in the effects builder here, there is a group called dust and debris. If you select one called moon dust, we have a simple little floating dust. Go to the gravity and if you just zero this out or set it to a very, very low value, you can get just a light floating dust like that. So I hit apply and there's our dust. And if we zoom in and out, it reacts to camera movement, kind of sells the, the 3D space of this. So that is our 3D text. This is a very handy technique to have on hand in case you ever need uh, giant uh, fields of 3D text and you're handed a list to work with, you can just drop the list in there, couple expressions in there, and you are good to go in just a matter of minutes. So my name is Harry Frank for Gray Machine. Thank you so much for watching.